Holy Bunkos, kids, look out. <laughs> the Keep It Moving Tour is adding new dates. Ooh-wee. We're coming to a city near you. Come and see us. Some stand-up. And we play AYG at the end of the show with the crowd. We answer your garbage questions. We've got some trash so far, but I know, I know there's deeper garbage out there around the country. Oh, yeah. So come on out and see us. Kippy, tell them what they need to know. Oh, baby, we're all over the place. New Brunswick, New Jersey, August 25th. Down the tomatoes. To Timonium, Maryland, Magoobies. August 26th. Couple of crabs. Then we're going to Tejas, baby. Uh-oh. August, uh, September 21st will be in San Antonio, Texas. Yes. September 22nd will be in Houston, Texas. September 23rd through the 25th, Austin, Texas, for the Moon Tower Comedy Festival. Look out. And I ain't done yet. August 26th will be at Fort Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. What? Then we're bringing it back to Long Island, baby. What? In all, uh, September 30th. And then we're coming home. The boys are co- the chickens are coming home to roost, baby. <laughs> <laughs> October twenty seventh, we're going to be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and then back down to Tejas, uh, November fifth through the seventh for Skank Fest South. Get those tickets. The yeah. link will be in the description. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite new podcast. This is Are You Garbage? Sure is. It's a little show we sit down with your favorite comedians, and we find out if they grew up to be classy Mm -hmm. or if they're just a big old piece of trash. Oh, baby. I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a beautiful day down here at Aunt Tootie's basement. She's gotten wind that the word is out on the street that we're looking for a new member of the editing team. Sure. Just dropped off a CD. She did? With some cuts on it. Okay. A headshot and a resume. <laughs> it's your headshot and my resume. So I don't know what the fuck she's well, you doing. you got to get a CD player. <laughs> my co-host is coming at you from right next to me. He's the CEO of Are You Garbage? He's an international businessman. He is not to be trifled with <laughs> before he's had his morning coffee. I can tell you that. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kevin James Ryan. Hey, gang. Happy to be here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, please make sure you rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on YouTube. And as you know, those numbers are... True to roof. True to fucking roof. And then Patreon.com, where the rubber hits the road, where Kippy goes to the bank. Uh, You can sign up. You get bonus episodes of AYG. You get episodes of a whole other podcast that me and the big man do called Hard Feelings, which is the breakaway hit of the season. Oh, my. God, um, sweeps week. Yeah, and then uh, we also do live streams with our top tier members. It's a good fucking time. Get involved. Live shows, merch, the whole nine. Do it. Yeah, we love you. And having a nice quick shout out to our producer extraordinaire. He is the pride of the Chicago comedy scene. Chicago. He's over here now repping out in Queens. T-Bone McMuffin. It's Toby McMullen. What's up, dudes? What, what's good, T-Bone? Nothing, kid. Just had a good time in Boston. Oh, I'm going to swim in boat. did. I'm going to smoke unfiltered six, and I'm going to call my mom names. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Providence and Boston, guys. You were fucking unbelievable. We love you. But that could not be neither here nor there. Nope. Because we got a little bit of garbage royalty in the fucking building This here. is something else. I'm ladies, nervous. Ladies and gentlemen, we could not be more excited to have our incredibly, and I mean incredibly, special guest here with us today. He is a very funny stand-up comedian and podcaster. Mm-hmm. He is one of the legendary writers and producers of the legendary Howard Stern Show. He is now the host of the Shuley Show, and he also has a show on his Patreon called Miserable Men Show. Gang, the big question but his mind today, is he garbage? Well, I'm definitely dressed like you guys, so <laughs> odds are I'm not far off. The crazy thing is we're recording this in the middle of winter. <laughs> Gang, give it up for the one, the only, Shuley, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, gentlemen. my it, man. It is an honor. First of all, big fan, subscriber to all your content. Thank you. Uh, Kev, I didn't know you from when I lived out here. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the big man, uh, I, I, I've known Foley for a while. I can't be... Any happier for two Thank people you, buddy. Thanks, in this man. success. Thank you. Appreciate and shocked that. at the same yeah, time. Yeah, right? <laughs> I can't believe this I, Yeah, I know. It's amazing. I know. Bobby Kelly called it a Hail Mary in yeah. the fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's bitter. He should. <laughs> but um, but you guys are phenomenal. The show is great. The intro. I was waiting for Chaz Palminteri to walk oh, back in. Oh, man. <laughs> That's you, you, buddy. And I want to say that if, if, if we're giving snuggles right now, which I, I greatly <laughs> appreciate it. 
you were always extremely uh, gracious and always cool. There was never any chip. And we talk about that all the time. The comics that you love are the guys that are successful and then still cool right. for the guys below them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you've always been absolutely amazing, and, and I love you. Well, I love you too, man, and I was stoned almost all the time, so that's a big part of it, you know? But uh, I feel like the ugly guy in a threesome right now. Yeah. yeah no, I you, love you. I love you so much. I'm over here whacking it in the corner. It's like the end of a comedy show. You were really good too. Oh, yeah. Oh, you had a great man. one too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I used yeah. to get that at a laugh house all the time. It'd, go, it'd be like two Ray murdering, headlining, uh, you know, John Laster killing, featuring, uh-huh. and not me hosting. I'd walk out and be like, yo, dude, oh, dude, you were awesome. John, you were awesome. All right, man, take care. Yeah, <laughs> that's a tough look. <laughs> Have a good night. Or you, or you get like just the smile and nod. That's always a tough one, too. All right, let's get into it. I want to hear the uh, the backstory. I, I have bits and pieces. I'm going in. I'm flying blind here. You're going to be interested, I think. Okay. I think you're going to enjoy it. So. Word on the streets. Yeah. Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, even before that, born in a little place called Israel. Ooh. Ooh. That's right. Uh, my uh, my uh, mother and father met in the Israeli army. Okay. My uh, dad's Israeli. My mom, who was born in Israel before it was Israel, is Palestinian. So we got the peace process in full effect in yeah. our house yeah, for Jesus. 60 Holy years shit. now. She was born when it was before Israel? Yeah, so she's on her birth certificate. She's Palestinian, so, you know, he's... But she's Jewish. But she's Jewish, and, you know, she's uh, he's... He's they they are a tag team of bad news and trash. <laughs> they can't wait. They can't every conversation never starts with hello. It's my mom going, "Oh, you remember we are still alive?" right away, <laughs> right for the fucking heart. Every conversation. Yeah. Dude, that is go fucking, for the jugular. That's as old school as it gets. So take me through that. So, so they meet in the They army. meet in the army. They have three boys. I'm the youngest of Three. Uh-huh. Uh huh. My uncle, who I'm named after, uh, was killed in the Six Day War before I was born. So when I was born, my mom she had a hunch things wouldn't mellow out <laughs> yeah, anytime yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna over be there. a bumpy ride. Yeah. <laughs> right. So she goes uh, to my dad. Guys, I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> so she says, "I want to move to the states." And and her and my dad, with thirty grand and three kids, right, got on a plane, took us to L.A. And we started our life there. And we lived in L.A. And, and they rolled the dice and sacrificed and took shit from family and friends for leaving. Uh-huh. And they were like, fuck you. They're not doing this. We're out of here. What were, they do- what were they doing for work when you guys moved? So my dad, within like... Because they did the Army thing like everybody has to. They have to, right? Yes. That's mandated. That wasn't their career. No, but everybody's got to be trained to kill out there. All right? (laughs) Yeah, you got to check your fucking six. (laughs) Head on a swivel. Head on a swivel, bro. You can't get caught fucking sleeping over (laughs) there. No, no. That's why there's not a lot of home invasion robberies (laughs) in Israel. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. (laughs) Fucking breaking in on an assassin. Yeah. Nobody's stealing Amazon packages (laughs) over there. Everybody's armed, and they give you a choice. You want to die with hands or with weapon? <laughs> so, Wait, everybody's got steel over there. Everybody packs. Sure, meat? because everybody's an army. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, everybody's. They're aligned at the grocery store with like M16s <laughs> and shit. Haven't you seen pictures? You hey, get... big guy. Where's the pop tarts? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you try a cup of decaf. Really. <laughs> I told you we're out the pop tarts. Yeah. You know, he's cutting. Kind of, he's cocking the thing. But so they came here. My dad opens up a, a deli in an office building. Are you kidding make, me? In starts, Los Angeles? Yeah, starts making sandwiches. Dude, how fucking cool is that? Sells that. Buys a car wash. Now we lived. Uh, I don't know how much, you, how well you guys know LA, but there's the San Fernando Valley where we lived. Uh-huh. And then my dad's car wash was over by Disneyland in Anaheim, which is about an hour and a half drive with zero traffic. Yeah. And this dude drove that shit seven days a week. Damn. Busted his ass. Uh, my mom was an addicted gambler, so that's where that money went. Okay, now and we're like, getting into it. <laughs> yeah. Did she work? Yeah, on yeah, poker slots. machines. Yeah. Oh, really? That was it. Yeah, no, she... Was she she doing that in in Israel? My mom said this to my dad. I will not cook for you. I will not clean. I will give you children, and I will be with you. And that is the deal. And my dad... Probably, I imagine, didn't have any other takers on the list, so... <laughs> I don't know, man. He was sitting on 30 grand. That's pretty sweet. I mean, listen. Coming to the U.S. Also, with... three kids, and you got you to well, move 6,000 miles. That's, that's 60s money, though. No, that was right? 70s money, and so a lot of pubic yeah. hair on it, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> George Washington has a bush. Yeah, but uh, but I just watched this dude hustle, man, from day one, and he was so tight with money and never fucked around. You know, uh, everybody had Fruit Loops. I had fruit rings in the white and oh, blue yeah, bag. Like we had it just. Yeah. You know, T-shirts I had would just, it'd be like a fake Jordan logo, and it was like, you know, Slam the Dunk written yeah. on it. He's, like, he's on rollerblades. <laughs> yeah, like, it was just awful. Cut it at the Foot Locker in Nigeria? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, he would get, I had four Buffalo Bills Super Bowl <laughs> sweatshirts growing What kind up. of house are we talking about? So when you say he was doing good, he was just, he was just smart with his money, and he wanted yeah, we, okay. we grew up in a nice place in L.A., middle class, I would say. In the city of Los Angeles. Well, in the valley. In the valley. In the valley, valley where porn is, is born, you know. And, and, and this is, I mean, you, you had to be a teenager in the late 70s and, and early 80s, right? No, I don't know how old you think I am, asshole, but <laughs> I was born in 74. So we <laughs> He's moved, your age. Yeah, we moved, to seven, we moved in 78. I, I went to, to <laughs> elementary. 300 years old? Yeah. Hey. I did think you were older <laughs> than me. What were the 20s sorry. like, Joel? Yeah. I'm sorry. Hey, Methuselah, what was it like? I don't know. How old do you think I am, asshole? <laughs> oh, man, that killed me. I apologize. No, all right, it's so all you're good. like me. So you were an 80s and 90s kid. Absolutely. In fucking in the valley. In That's LA. pretty fucking cool to me. It, That's it, what I was getting at. It was good. It was good. If if I was able to do the things other kids were doing, if I had some sort of bankroll. That's why at 15, I went and got a job. Okay. I said, I'm not dealing with this guy. What was the job? Uh, scooping ice cream at a store called Thrifty's, Ooh. which was like a CVS, but had like an ice cream counter. They used at to the do front. that back in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. How did your pop sandwich shop work out? Was it still up and running when you were? Oh no, he sold that. He moved into the car wash sold industry. That. So that's how he did and it. And that's that. He ended up owning three car washes. Which but car really? wash industry over there is huge. Yes, it's like they're very. If you own a like. If you own a car wash over there, they can be very profitable. A lot yeah. of low riders coming in and out yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to wash up out there. So and he was killing it. He was doing great. He was killing it, but he was also, you know, it, it, the trek of like seven days a week. Sure. Going back and forth and then coming home to her. It was <laughs> not a fun trip. <laughs> That's his mother he's talking about. I know, coming home oh, to her. Oh, they used to argue in Hebrew because <laughs> this is the thing. If your parents speak a native language and they argue in it, the arguments are a million times better because they're they're funnier, they're more personal, mm -hmm. they're more just a real knife in the fucking Can heart. you understand it? Oh, my God. I speak it fluently till this day. Holy so, shit. So I remember at eight years old, uh, them arguing in the kitchen. She told them in Hebrew, go get a fr uh, popsicle out of the freezer, shove it up your ass, eat it, and then tell me what it tastes like. That's pretty good. Damn. You don't even need the last three things. No, no, you know? no, no, no. Yeah, you can stop it shoving it up your ass. I think Hemingway yeah. said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, that was yeah, once it goes up your ass, you win. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You don't need to do anything. But so they, they would argue a lot, but that was their relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just their conflict. They're Israel, Palestine. He's occupying her vagina. Boom, bang, bang. You know what I mean? But so she's not Palestinian, Palestinian. She's, she's, she's not, but uh, she's more than he is let's say that she has the tendencies she, like she she likes more of the arabic food than he does uh, -huh. uh he's very you know straight like he's originally born in romania so he sounds like dracula my dad <laughs> he's got and my wife when we I were love dating, to wash your car come on <laughs> when i we, don't care who you are that's a good piece of business <laughs> when we were dating my wife and i would do impressions of my dad. She goes, she, he doesn't sound like that. And then she met him. She's like, holy shit, he's the count. Yeah. You know? It's fucking so cool. That's and he's so perv, school. too. He's old school perv. Yeah. What do you mean? Old oh. school Romanian dirtball. I like it. <laughs> he'd be driving me to school. We'd see a woman jogging down the street. He would just be driving. He'd go, she'd be like in a sports bra, and, you know, jogging shorts. And he'd go, I like what I see. <laughs> And what I don't see, I like even more. Jesus. <laughs> hey, good talking to you, Pop. Yeah. <laughs> Can I grab some lunch money? I'm going to walk from here. When I, he would bust me when I'd try to stay up late at night and watch Carson. He would, he, I'd hear him coming down the hall, so I'd, I'd turn my TV down, and I'd pretend like I'm asleep, mm -hmm. and he would stand by my head for like 10 seconds. He wouldn't say a word. And then he'd say this to me in Hebrew. He would say, you can't scare a hooker with a dick. 
And I would start laughing yeah, immediately yeah, because yeah, you yeah. hear your dad saying hooker and dick and you're like trying to be asleep. And that's how he'd bust me every day. It was fucking weird. He would drop these weird fucking. That's Massad phrases. tactics. Right yeah. There. I'll tell you he's that. never, till this day, he's never fully told me what he did in the military. <laughs> so I don't doubt it, dude. Scaring hookers. He goes, I don't want to talk about it. Sounds like a throat slitter to me. I'll tell you <laughs> that right now. Bare hands. Bare hands. <laughs> All right. So. That's that's great. That is so fucking old school. Yeah. So where did I get Vegas from? So no. So then I finished uh, school in L.A. Uh huh. And uh, I college? Moved, uh, no, no, no. There's no college. There's, it was literally like a starter pistol. That's how trashy he is. He referred to school. He meant high school. I yeah. finished school. Yeah. And that was that's a, in no. I finished school means I finished. I graduated college. No. Or medical I, school. I was getting my bachelor's in high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As tough as it was, finishing school was a huge milestone for me. Uh, I hated it. How was your school? It was, uh, we bust in, it was about 2,000 kids in our school, uh -huh. and they bust in about 70% of the students. So you had, you know, 30% of these Valley white kids, right. and then South Central LA comes nice. in and takes shit over. And all my friends were these guys from South Central LA. That's I got awesome. along with all of them. I made them all laugh, you know, mm -hmm. doing all this silly shit to get laughs. And that was cool for me. It was a hang. It was, yeah, it was yeah. about figuring out my sense of humor, I guess, looking back on it now. I hate it. Like, I hated the obligation to go to school, but also I'm like, I'm there. I'm like, let's make the best of it. Let's fucking hang. Like, I like the fact that it was a hang all the time. No, I, I hear you, nerd. Yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking get your head out of a locker, <laughs> dork. <laughs> No, I had a calculator, too. I did. <laughs> so then you go to Vegas. So then, yeah, then I go to Vegas. Uh, my, my folks were, had moved out there. Um, they had? Wait, hold which, on. Yeah, my mom was an addicted gambler. Wait a minute, back this up. You're yeah. still in high school. Your parents have already moved? No, no, no. I finished high school. They moved to Vegas. I wanted to avoid it, so I moved with a couple buddies to Arizona for a little stick, right? Uh -huh. Very classy. Uh, yes. Uh, Sedona. Option. Sedona, Arizona. Home of the Red Rock Mountains. Hippies leaving crystals and money on top of mountains they thought were space stations that were going to take off one day. So whenever the West we... Coast is goofy, Dude. We're, we're starting to get really far away from the Israeli military and the uh, the Mediterranean yeah. here. Yeah, we're sliding off the table. Whenever we needed weed money, we would hike up to these mountains <laughs> and just take these fucking money that these people would leave and just go buy a sack with it because we're that. like. Well, I mean, if this thing's going to take off, we'll deal with it later. Yeah, well, like, yeah, wishing, yeah. Wait, wishing well stuff? Like, yeah, yeah. Like people would leave crystals, and like Sedona's all about energy and vortexes. <laughs> You're and, up there grifting the money. Yeah. Oh, my God. Working Stupid a, hippies never saw it coming. Working a Burger King drive through sitting there hiking up there, getting weed money and crystals, whatever we needed it. You worked Jesus. at a Burger King drive through Yeah, and then we ended up- What get, window? First, or were you a money guy or were you the food guy? I was the food guy. I wanted the headset. Yeah. That was, it was a mic. I wanted the fuck. I wanted. <laughs> yeah, that's so he's, he's on there like Rickles. Oh, I hey, would. Do, a, hey, don't so, supersize it, fat ass. That's so fucking trashy. But I know exactly what you're talking about. I would you do voices. You want headset. gear? Yeah. yeah. You want cool shit when that you're at work? Pack you on want the a side. tool belt? You you want Woo. something to look responsive? I need fries now. Yeah. yeah. Right. You mute him. You go. This fucking asshole. Then you turn him back on. <laughs> yes, sir. How can? I? But I would do voices. Like I would do. Like they would pull up, and I would just be like. Hi, welcome to Burger King. Can I take you on a walk? And they'd be like, I love your movies, man. Can I get a... <laughs> Must have trouble getting gigs right now, huh? Yeah, yeah. Holy... Did, was comedy... Did you want to be a comedian at this point? Did you... It was the thing I loved the most, but the idea of me doing it was never a reality. So there was sure. no... So you're not going to college. You're no. just working at a fucking Burger King. I'm just Arizona. trying to figure out what's fucking next. What am I going to do that I'm not going to hate the rest of my life? Because every job I've had... I've hated. I've done right. all forms of construction sure. for a few weeks. I've I dealt blackjack and roulette in Vegas and pie gal. Yeah, put a pin in that. Oh yeah, Hang we'll get to that. Um, so like I've done it. I I pushed wheelchairs at the airport, which is uh you know sounds like it's a redeeming you know like you're helping handicap, but it's really just a bunch of foley's yeah, that don't yeah, want to yeah, walk yeah, to the yeah, gate course, yeah. and then throw you fifty cents for being a fucking human engine on a carpet. <laughs> He's hey, asked a couple of times. Yeah. Hey, Pinhead, stop by the Hudson News. Will you? I want to grab, <laughs> <laughs> grab some Twizzlers for the flight. <laughs> yeah, I, I assume that those people don't generally treat the people pushing them nicely. No, you get that vibe. Oh. I'd have one hand on the chair, pulling the luggage, covered in sweat, on carpet. The guy go, could you swing by the Burger King on the way? And I, here's a word you probably never heard. No, you yeah. fucking animal. No, we're not swinging by Burger King. Yeah. Can you swing by Burger King, use your employee discount? <laughs> <laughs>
I need a couple of whoppers for the flight. So, so yeah, when I uh, left Arizona and uh-huh. and decided to move back in with my folks because my roommate stopped working, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not gonna. Pay. How old are you at this point? What are we talking? Uh, about? nineteen. You're 19? 19? Yeah. The move back in with the folks. I've done it a Nine, couple of 19, times. 19, yeah. though, it's that's tough. nothing. No, it it's is. nothing. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't, you know. And so then I did what my roommates were doing to me, to them. I was living rent-free uh, on their dime. And um, and they were okay. They are cool with that, right? Th- listen. He didn't Jewish... break your balls about it. That's good oh, family. No, no, that's no, no, good no. family. Is that, no, that's where you're wrong. Because the only reason they're cool with it is because it comes with the the exception that we're going to break your balls yeah. about every move you make. Stay because here and we here. get the shit on you. Yeah, Plus, yeah, yeah. we've been married a hundred years. <laughs> we're tired of fighting with each other. Sure. Guess where the crosshairs are going? Yeah. You. So that way, you know, every day, uh, my dad would just, have you looked in the paper today? <laughs> Another <laughs> hotel is opening. They were probably there they, waiting for you. They just like that. That They wanted me to work in the casino industry, and I hated the casinos. I hated seeing that that energy of people losing everything and, and ruining their lives i yeah. didn't want to be there eight hours a, it's a day. tough look but it's you're in vegas and glamour right yeah, you're in vegas much, so, yeah. so what are you gonna do right so yeah i move in with them i get a job at uh, the barbary coast what's he doing is your dad my da- so my dad gets out there they both go there to retire he's there for a month sold the car washes whatever, sold, sold the car washes nice. moved to vegas to retire Fucking love this guy after a month he goes i'm done retiring he goes and gets a job at Walmart in the hardware department. And then he goes from Walmart to the MGM when they reopened 30 years ago and got hired as a room service cashier, which these guys are like in the belly of the hotel. They're just at a register, and all the room service staff comes back with the receipts and everything, and he they types just, them yeah. up, gives them the tips. And he did that for 30 plus years. He just retired a couple years Jesus ago. Jesus fucking Dude. Christ. That they, generation, man, they're fucking old school. There's no... I remember living out here when the blizzard hit, and I was walking to see if I could get to work, and I couldn't. I'm walking back home, and the snow's up to my knees. There's a guy, like, in his 80s, and he's digging this Nissan Sentra out of the fucking snow, and I look at him, and I go, this is nuts, huh? And he goes, hey, fuck it. Like, you <laughs> killed Nazis, you yeah. fucking idiot. <laughs> Fuck, it's snow. Yeah. Toughen up, you pussy. I know. It's so true. <laughs> it's like... I mean, so, yeah, that's that generation, man. And, and so he went and did that. And I finally caved, and I'm like, fine. I'll get a job as a blackjack dealer. So what do you got to do? You got to go to blackjack dealer school. Really? Yes. Sorry, so you, you pay 300 bucks, and you go, and you basically... It's up to you when you graduate. If you want to come once a week for six months... Until you're good enough for them to send you for an audition, that's your schedule. If you want to come five days a week and be ready in like two, three weeks for an audition, you can do that too. That's how you do it. You have to audition. So the audition is basically they send you to the casino that the dealer school is owned by. Hang on. For the record, I just want to take a moment and appreciate the fact that right now we are having a discussion about blackjack dealer school. And auditioning at a casino. Yeah, I'm yeah. Fucking... I've had friends that do it. <laughs> yeah, and then got caught that? stealing and got booted. Dude, they send you, and the audition is they send you to the casino at three o'clock in the morning because they're like, how much could they fuck things up on a Tuesday sure, at three a.m. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And now dealer school is just you're just playing blackjack all day. You're learning the lingo. You're learning the rules. You're learning the payouts. Who teaches that? They got to be some real dirt balls, dude. I'll tell you this story, right? <laughs> I'm dealing one day. The tray is like your computer, right in front of you, right under your chin. And my, my teacher goes, keep an eye on your tray. People can take money out of your tray without you even seeing it. And I'm going, what are you fucking talking? It's right here. You're not going to take anything from me. So I deal out everybody's cards. What do you hit, stay, hit, stay. I go to flip over my cards. He put a fucking thumbtack through my cards into the felt without me seeing it. Jesus. And I go, how the fuck did you do that? He says, I wasn't always a blackjack school teacher. Yeah. And that, that told me right there, Yikes. this guy's paying out of debt right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's scumbag. on a list somewhere. <laughs> yeah. For sure. He used to be a scumbag. Yeah. You want the money or the hammer? That's awesome. Yeah. So. It's like when the FBI hires the fucking check for old guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kippy, how about those, uh, those folks over there at Manscaped? Oh, baby, do I love them. Yeah, love them to death. They just keep, uh, they just keep coming through. Uh, grooming is very important. People are starting to get back together. People are starting to bump elbows and uglies again. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to come correct when you're coming. You want to show up fresh on the scene. You know what I'm saying? So grab the Manscaped 4.0. It's unbelievable. You got the light. You can use it in a shower. 
quiet as a mouse, powerful, unbelievable product. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's from NASA. That's how good it is. It's, it's the fourth generation um, ball trimmer, a cutting edge ceramic blade for reducing grooming accidents. Thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. They got their own skin safe technology. The lawn, the lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor. It's crazy. I ain't talking 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. 7,000 RPMs. What are we doing? It's like the Apollo mission. Like you said, it's waterproof the whole nine yard. I use it on my face. I don't care. Call me an animal. Call it's me nice. garbage. Yeah, it I use good. it all over the body. A little butthole, a little ball action, a little mustache. Keep it tight yeah, back it, there, huh? Yeah, I mean, it, it works all over the place. Want to be able to peek over the bushes, you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, they also send you ball deodorant, crop reviver, you know, everything to keep you fresh down there. Yeah, everything they... you need to keep your ball bag looking nice and smooth and ready for some action, they take care of it. They do. You know what I've been using there? Foot deodorizer. It works like a charm. Yeah. It smells great. Yeah, you should put some under your arms. But the 4.0. It's, I mean, what are we doing? We're the, talking. The, it's come on. the top of the line. Come on. You know what I mean? Come on. It's like saying a Lincoln's better than a Cadillac. Forget about it. Jeez. Uh, so, guys, you get, you get 20. smacked around, you talk like that. You get 20% off and free shipping with promo code garbage at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the promo code garbage at manscaped.com. Your dick and balls need some help. Yes, they for do. A clean Trinity and beyond your ball. Your space balls will thank you. Keep it tight. Think about your significant other, for God's sake. Do it. Clean yourself up. Gang, the podcast is sponsored by our good friends at BetterHelp. Yep. Guys, if you have something in your life that you feel is like holding you back, reach out to BetterHelp. They can help you. They assign you to a licensed professional therapist that you could be talking to within 48 hours and start getting things on the right path. Yeah, guys, it's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help line. No. It's professional counseling done securely online. Um, there's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be available to you locally, wherever you are. If you live in a small town or the doctor you like moved or something, this is a perfect way to fit that need. Uh, the service is available to clients worldwide. You log in anytime, send a message to the counselor. It's easy peasy. Um, they're committed to getting you help. Uh, it's affordable. It's more affordable than traditional online counseling and financial aid is available if you need it. Nice. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit BetterHelp.com slash garbage. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, and join over the 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And In fact, so many people are using BetterHelp. They're now recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Special offer for Are You Garbage listeners. You get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash garbage. One more time, that's BetterHelp.com slash garbage. Stamps.com, gang. I'll say it again. Stamps.com. I'll say it one more time, you bozos. Stamps.com. Yeah. Don't waste time in the post office. Get on Stamps.com. We use them to send out all the cards. We know we got a lot of small business owners out there. It's absolutely fantastic. They get good deals from UPS and USPS. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, guys, you can send letters, packages, and you pay less, a lot less, uh, it saves, business, saves businesses thousands of hours and tons of money every year. Uh, you can ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. All you need is the printer and a computer or the internet. Call it a day. Bing, bang, boom. Uh, they save nearly over, they've saved nearly 1 million small business owners like you, time and money. Offer deals that you can't get anywhere, up, like anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS and up to 66% off UPS shipping. Not too What shabby. are we doing? We're giving what away to cow. You what know what doing? I mean? Giving away to farm over here. And with their switch and save feature, you can quickly compare carriers uh, to find the best rates uh, available at any time. Stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code GARBAGE, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage in a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts required. What? If you don't like it, pull the plug. It's easy peasy. I'm but you're not going to. But you're not going to. love it. Because you're going to love stamps.com. That's Just right. go to stamps.com. Stamps click the microphone at the top of the homepage. Type in garbage. One more time, that's stamps.com, promo code garbage, stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Now back to the show. And, I, and, and so they send you to this audition. I go to this audition. This is the first time. Could I'm have been anywhere. Could have been any one of the casinos, right? Well, they owned the dealer school, the Barbary Coast, the Gold Coast, the Rio. That place, that company owned the dealer school. So they uh -huh. send you to the shittiest casino of them all, which is the Barbary Coast. Gotcha. 3 a.m. I've never You're even dealing. heard of that. Yeah. The Barbary Coast. It's across from Sounds like Caesars. shaving cream. <laughs> it's across from Caesars and Bally's. And if you blink, you missed it, right? And it's 3 a.m. on a Tuesday. You're dealing with prostitutes, cab drivers, whatever the fuck. And uh, I get in front of this tray, 
And I look down, I see this is real fucking money. Then I start thinking, there's people watching me right now. I get totally fucking nervous, right? And I mean, I bomb so bad dealing. I'm paying on pushes. People are busting. You got I don't a 44. Take... You win. <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> now, if you hit 51, I'll give it to you. And I get I get tapped out, and I'm walking away. I'm go, I do the clap thing, and I walk away, and I'm going. Not only did I not get this job, they're gonna ban me from walking into this sure, fucking casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they call me the next day. They go, "Can you start Tuesday?" And I go, <laughs> "They'll hire any fucking." Yeah, well, you're not. Player. I mean, the other people, the other contestants aren't coming from Mensa. They're, they're no. also at the same school. <laughs> at least I spoke English. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so so yeah. So then I did that for like eight nine months, which I hated. I watched. Uh, I watched a guy get caught cheating at my table once, which was awesome. What'd they do? So this guy was doing a thing yeah. called dirty money. Now, dirty money, let's say you got two red chips, $5 chips, $10 bet. You get your cards. In his fingers right here, he's got a $25 chip, green chip, pinched right here. Uh -huh. You can't see it. So when he takes his card, he he sees what it is. It's a 20, he drops, it, yeah. drops it, slides it under the two red like that. Without you even noticing. If he, if he thinks he has good cards. Well, he sees his cards, sees I have a 20 or 21, and then fucking dra if he If that he's happens, adding he to drops the bet. The right, he's adding to the bet after he's seen his cards. And in, 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 he, this guy was doing it for 30 minutes. I didn't, I didn't notice a thing, right? This guy's <laughs> killing over here. <laughs> it's probably because I'm high as a kite, but whatever. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, my pit boss walks over, and he whispers in my ear, whatever happens, keep dealing. I've also never heard the terms my pit boss before. Yeah, yeah. My pit boss. That's crazy. This guy was such a piece of shit, my pit boss. He would walk -uh. in. Oh, uh, he would walk in 8 a.m. He'd go, sweetie, Jack Coke. He'd do that. <laughs> he'd smoke a cigarette with it in his finger. who wrap his whole fucking thing. made me nuts. Yeah, muff it. But he goes, whatever happens, keep dealing. And I'm thinking, is this guy going to rob the fucking place? Like, what does that mean? That's whatever awesome. Ha sure enough, two dudes show up on either side of this guy. They go, sir, can you come with us? And I'll never forget. He goes, yeah, let me grab my chips. He goes, we'll get those for you. Yeah, you always hear that. We'll take it. They're all right there. You're good. You're good. So they start walking away. In about 20 seconds, I get tapped out for a break. So I go, I'm going to see what the fuck's going on. So I kind of trail behind them a little bit. I don't want to, you know. And they go down the stairs where the employee lounge and the cafeteria. I wanted is. to ask you about that. Yes. Go ahead. So I walk downstairs. Now, the cafeteria's to the right, the lounge is to the left, and then there's some more doors over there that I don't know what they are. I walk downstairs, he ain't in the cafeteria, and he ain't in the lounge. Yeah. So he's in the hammer door somewhere. <laughs> and He's that, in the bang-bang room. But the reality of it is, these guys, a lot of them get hired so they can catch the other guys. For security, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they give them the option. They go, look, we'll send you into the computer system, which is like... Interpol, right? Yeah, you never get to you never get to go into a casino again. Ever, you get black Atlantic or, City, yeah. Vegas, anywhere there's a casino. But how do they enforce that well, through the cameras? Yeah, they 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 upload their picture into the database, and it's a retinal scan. It's yeah. it's like the same shit Israel uses at the airport. Jesus. Like, yeah, yeah. Like so, once you're once you're on the list, you're fucked. And for these guys, they're doing that because it's a source of income. They know how to do it. They're Somewhat good at it. Yeah. I fucking do it in a heartbeat. Are you kidding me? Dude, when parks. How awesome would that be? When parks opened in Philly, I'm from right out, right by parks. And uh, it opened and the first night we went out because we were big gamblers. We went, we were playing blackjack. And this guy was sitting next to my buddy and just being like, here, bet this, bet this. Because he was the kid, he, he was counting the deck at yeah. the time. Yeah. And was like, dude, just follow me. Like, yeah. We're, like, let's go. So my buddy's like, all right, let's fucking go. So. And then, like, after 45 minutes, security came up and was like, sir, we need to talk to you. And then he was like, they had already exchanged numbers. And he texted him and goes, hey, man, I'm banned from every casino. And he showed up on opening <laughs> night thinking, like, hey, this is when they're the weakest. Like, I'll be able to fucking come and take money. But they got him after, like, 45 minutes. I mean, think it's about so that. Trashy, think about man. that security. You can't do math in your head yeah, without crazy. getting caught. <laughs> like, how fucking crazy is that? Yeah. They're like, this guy's fucking doing math in his head. Go get him. Table get nine. Him. Yeah. This guy's good at it. Get him. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Then there was a blackout one night in the casino. The power went out. It's like Ocean's Eleven. Oh, it's like the no, purge. And you know what? I did? I did the dumbest thing ever. 
I for a second uh, the power goes out and I lay on the tray so nobody will steal. Like it's my fucking yeah. money, yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. like a moron. Yeah. And after half a second of laying on, I go, they're gonna accuse me of stealing 100%. my show. And I get the fuck off. I go, hey, buddy, hey, free free reign, take whatever you want. People did people grab shit. Nobody grabbed a fucking thing. Yeah, you're not, not making it out of there. Yeah, I mean, you can't fuck around in Vegas casinos, man. That is, I. I Maybe the mob doesn't run it anymore, but uh, it's not like there's a better <laughs> there's a better boss in there. Like yeah. they yeah, run not a tight like the, shit. Yes, they're not like the most upstanding citizens. Right, they're not very understanding. Let's right. say that. Yeah, and, and I just got tired of ruining people's lives and just fucking taking their money. And like, it was a breaking house, what they call a breaking house, which means, you know, it's old school. Like the pit bosses get a commission if the tables take in money. They don't tell you that as a dealer. Sure. So when you're losing, which is out of your control most of the time. They punish you. They go, all right, you go deal that $3 table at 4 a.m. Yeah. on a Tuesday to three prostitutes. Jamming up the works. When, when a guy passed out on the fuck. That's your next three days. That's it's my kind of scene. Right. <laughs> Eating <laughs> a bowl of cereal while you're playing. And for me, it's just like, fuck, man. I, I, I you know, I, I pulled a seven card 21 on a guy once. Jesus Christ. I, wa- I wanted to blow my brain. I felt so <laughs> bad. And the guy goes, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Another 300. I'm like, why are you still yeah, here? Yeah, leave, dude. What more do you need to see? Yeah. I've never done That's that bad in my luck. life. Yeah. You need four aces to come out to do that. You understand how fucking crazy that is? Your kids are standing next to you. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? I was, in a, I was at the Taj one time playing. I think I was down for a show, and I was just like hanging, playing during the day. And uh, Blackjack and the guy next to me, old guy, fucking passes out, faints. Yeah. Just goes back. That and old gag? I, I panic. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, Get him. <laughs> nobody moved. The dealer did not even stop dealing. I'm like, would we have to do something? Like, the cameras will see him. Yeah. And then they're like, this happens f- five times a day. It happened to me, and I just... It'll just fall out, and they don't bl- they don't bat an eye at it. So in, in the casino, if, you, if you're a dealer and you go to pay somebody or, or you're taking chips and it falls, you have to yell, chip down, and you have to either say inside or outside, inside the pit or outside the pit. You have to call everything out because they're watching, they're listening. So everything's got to be by the book. When, if, when you're paying people out with black chips, with $100 chips, you got to now four black out. So now they call the cage in case somebody tries to, you know, has counterfeit four more. Sure. So I have this guy at my table and I see him fucking swaying and swaying. And next thing you know, he just goes, pow, right off the stool onto the floor. And I just go, play her down on the outside. <laughs> just kept dealing. We did a show in Atlantic City, and Foley walks around the casino with, like, fake pit boss energy. Yeah. Like, he oh, wishes yeah. he was. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, For you, sure. That'd be awesome. You, would, you would be a great pit. We also caught mixed it. up with some cocktail waitress. Have a rip my heart out. We, uh, were, we were at a roulette table. Living in a motel. And a kid, a player <laughs> no was No water in the pool. <laughs> That's what I'm fucking talking about. Doing shots of fucking Jameson and Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> like an old detective. <laughs> <laughs> Revolver on the desk. <laughs> Surely, let's just get through tonight. <laughs> of all the offices, you had to walk into mine. I'm sorry, kid. I didn't mean to cut you. Yeah, it's fine. It's a good piece of business, though. Yeah, man, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, and then and then and you're uh, 1920. Well, that, that for that I was 21. Uh, yeah, okay. to be 21 to deal. So yeah, that one I was 21, and and when I was uh, done with that, I, that's when I. I was like, all right, I'm going to – I had tried an open mic once before that okay. in L.A. Uh, at the Laugh Factory in Sunset. I camped out all morning on the sidewalk, <sighs> which I didn't know anything about comedy at the time, and these guys are all sitting there, and they're going, David Tell. I, I blew him off stage last week. Yeah, I'm going, yeah. wow, these guys are <laughs> good. good. He's like, hey, Chris Rock doesn't even write his own stuff anymore. I'm like, wow, I didn't know all this industry <laughs> stuff. And then I watched him go up and just eat a shit sandwich one <laughs> after the other. And I remember one guy go, how long have you been doing this? He goes, 14 years. And it was my first day. And I remember thinking, that's not fucking that good. Ain't good. You yeah. camp out here every night? <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> so I said, I'm probably never going to do this again. But I tried it. Okay. Uh, bombed horribly. But, you know, you know how it goes. A week, you know, a month, a week, whatever, how long. You're like, I want to try this shit 100%. again. Of course. So I had a job at that time working at the McCarran Airport, the Vegas Airport, as a wheelchair pusher uh, because they didn't drug test, and that was cool with me. You ever see the Area 51 planes flying out? No, no. Never? Uh, no, I can't. <laughs> you were bringing I, fucking heat on us? Yeah. Talk off camera. Yeah. I, listen, I, um, 
I was too busy pushing really fat people around. Like, like legit. I watched a handicap. Me too. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was about me, everybody. Uh, I watched a guy with no legs, right, walk off the plane like a gorilla on his knuckles. I've right? seen that before. Gets to the jetway. His wheelchair is waiting for him. His wheelchair. Hops in. Because they said we need a pusher for this flight. So hops in the fucking. Jetways are like this, right? He's fucking just hauling at, okay. and I'm his girlfriend towing his fucking bag behind yeah. him, right? Guy doesn't ask for a fucking thing. Cause he's slaloming through people, gets to the taxi lines, backing up into the lift, fucking thing lifts him up. Like a, like a hero. He looks yeah. at me, he goes, don't let anyone tell you you can't do anything. And I'm like, you know. Yeah. Wouldn't have had his bag for what for people, whatever. <laughs> but... <laughs> But it was the, the handicapped people never asked for your help. It was just people who didn't want to walk, and yeah. and a couple celebrities here and there yeah. uh, that I got to push. Who was the cool celeb? BB King was probably Damn. tipped me a hundred bones and had, had Lucille on his lap the whole time. Really? Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Was he it, playing? No, but you know, fuck, man, I'm I'm like I could touch the fucking thing if that I wanted awesome. to. Also, he said a hundred bones. That yeah, is going in the file. Yeah. <laughs> what's the what's bones the, is bad? What's the most you ever got tipped as a dealer? Uh, well, see, the thing with dealing is you can't keep it for yourself. It all gets pooled with all the other dealers. So, for example, Super Bowl weekend is the busiest weekend in Vegas. Uh, dealers, so on Sunday, we made every dealer in the casino walked out with 155 bucks in cash. The Rio Hotel, Super Bowl Sunday, every dealer walks out with about 750 in cash. So there's the difference between a breaking house uh -huh. and a good house, yeah, right? Gotcha. So so you weren't really making great money. What that place was about is learning as many games as you can while you're there to, go to hopefully else. get to a better spot. So that that's why they call it a breaking house. So I dealt roulette, pie gal poker, blackjack, hated all of them. Oh my God, yeah, that's so true. yeah, <laughs> roulette dealer. Uh, uh just no more bets. I used to hate that fucking thing. No. And then they go, uh, I remember an Israeli guy coming to the thing. He saw my name. Israelis are the, they, Israelis are the fucking, because you're from Israel, I'm from Israel. You should lie and cheat and steal from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's their mentality. Hey, we got we to gotta watch our backs, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's like, you know. You surely think a heart attack, will you? Yeah. I met people dealing blackjack from, my, from the valley, from my high school. They didn't go, what's your undercard? They didn't go, what's your whole yeah, card? Yeah, wink if you got the goods. We, were in, <laughs> we were in homeroom. Hook me up, dude. Yeah, it's awesome. It's like, fuck off. So, yeah, the Israeli guy goes, uh, he's telling me, uh, let me know in Hebrew. He's like, let me know uh, how you release the ball around which numbers it will land. I go, you think there's a fucking system yeah, to this, you idiot? It's a ball with a spinning wheel. The, 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 the pit boss can speed it up, slow it down, do whatever the fuck he wants at any time, and I'm snapping it out of my finger. You think I, I'm going to get... Yeah, I just go, double zero, green, double zero, yeah, bet yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. coming. Wait, they can control the speed of the roulette wheel? A pit boss can come by if he doesn't... If it's spinning too fast or whatever, he can slow it down. He can, I mean, there's a usual thing that it spins at, but I've seen him come by, especially in the breaking houses, man. They'll, but you don't, you, I would dump to somebody a lot of money... I get kicked in the shoe, you know, by the pit boss. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just dealing cards. <laughs> Fucking like, 3 a.m. on a Tuesday. We're at the end of the strip. What do you think I'm doing? If I could control Fucking it. fighting for my life over yeah. here. If I could control it, I'd be on the other side. Yeah. Fucking play it. Do the people who go in to say, I didn't even know anything like that about casinos, that there's like shitty ones and I guess, you know, not for lack of a better term, shitty ones and good ones. Right. Do the people that go to the shitty ones, do they realize... They're in the shitty ones, and they just 100%. accept it. It's reflective of the person going. 100%. A classy guy goes to the Borgata. A trashy right. guy goes to Bailey's. It's like an owner looking like their pet after a while. It's just inevitable, and that that is <laughs> that's brutal. Yeah, you you didn't you didn't have that chills my bones. You didn't have anybody sitting there in a fucking you know three thousand dollar suit going. Well, I think we came in the wrong place. Yeah, you know. Yeah, guys in three thousand dollar suits aren't playing nickel slots. Right, you know. Although I watched a guy win a hundred grand on craps one night, Damn. I think one hundred and ten grand. I'm at a dead game, right? No players, and I'm just standing there at a dead game, and I'm watching this guy. Surely's the mush. Oh my god, <laughs> surely stinks, man. Yeah. There was nothing that I loved more than having nobody to deal to. I I could stand there and watch people all day long. Talk about killing the vibe. Oh my <laughs> god, this see, guy's I love crushing it. it. He's winning, and uh, I'm watching my one of the pit bosses chase after him like a little girl. 
trying to keep him at the casino. Yeah. He goes, ah. we can get you a suite. We can get you, you a room. He goes, no, nah, I'm show. good. He goes, well, okay, where do you want to go? We got a limo. We'll take you there. We'll bring you back. I goes, no, nope, I'm good. They just got they got to keep it in the house. Yeah, keep sure. it in the house. The second it gets out the door, you're fucked. That somebody else is going to get yeah. it. Because that guy ain't stopping at that point. You're no. playing that kind of stakes. You're not stopping. That, yeah, that, 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 um, there was one story that a friend of mine told me. He worked at the MGM. This is the coolest tipping story. Is that a classy one, MGM? Yeah, yeah. MGM's a right. good one. All right. You can also tell if you're in a classy... Here's a little tip. You can tell you're in a classy casino... If Julie's not dealing. If I'm not dealing. <laughs> and the lights don't go out. Yeah. And players don't fall off their stools. Now, uh, you, can, you know you're in a decent casino if you ask the dealer for advice and they give you advice. Like my casino... They didn't want you to help players with. Guy has a fucking three dollar bet up. He's got two eights. Go, what should I do? Uh, split them. You get kicked in the foot. You go. It's three dollars. Yeah, it's three it's bucks. Six what are we doing? We here? can't cover six dollars if this guy cleans up. Like, what are we talking about? So, we would go to like the better casinos. Me and like four friends. We'd take a table, and all of us would just hold our cards up so we could all see. Because there's no rule. That you can't show the other players your cards. A lot of people don't know that or don't think of that. You have to tell them you're a dealer when you're in their plan? Not at all. No? No, it's not like a cop where I'm like, hey, I'm on the job. Hey, I'm operating. I'm <laughs> operating in your backyard tonight. Just want to give you the, the professional courtesy as a heads up from dirt bag to dirt bag. You're, I'm in a breaking room down there, okay? <laughs> you have to flash him a soft pack of Marlboro lights yeah, yeah. all scrunched up. Listen, if you're down a pie gal, let me know. <laughs> I can tag in. If you need a hot pack. You guys should staff, just let me know. <laughs> I got my vest in the car. <laughs> but you can play did you as... wear a vest? Oh, yeah. Oh. Not only did I have a vest, but they had those little fucking uh, uh, things the on the... Bands. Yeah, yeah like the bands the... on the... Like we're in New Orleans or on a riverboat. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, feel yeah, that yeah. button down bun. shirt. I can feel that button down shirt on me right now and it's making my skin crawl. Uh, yeah, I saw... I remember I was driving down the Atlantic City Expressway. There was four dealers in a white Chevy Cavalier. <laughs> I just and I just remember looking, life. dude. Hate like they were all just. <laughs> first of all, it's the tiniest, it's the size of this table. It's like four ogres all piled in there. I'm like, they are. They got a 45 minute drive to the worst night of their life. Oh, oh my! God. My shift was 3 a.m. to uh, 11 a.m. Okay, that was the shift that I dealt. So, I would see now at 4 a.m. Fuck that, dude. Wait, I'm sorry. Well, you gotta you gotta realize it's Vegas. I'm in my 20s. That's also true. I am, I'm not going to sleep. True. Anyways, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I, was, um, I was dealing one night, and I guess a friend of ours got uh, in trouble for something, and they knew me and another guy were friends with him. And so they said, uh, listen, tomorrow you guys got to go, or two days you guys got to go take a random drug test. I guess he got caught with drugs in his locker or something. And me and my buddy, we smoked weed all day, every day. Right. We hated our job. We showed up stoned. We'd take breaks, run to the car, get stoned, come back. So now Vegas, you got to understand, they don't just do piss tests. They do hair tests there. And hair tests are like, they're like Twitter timeline. Every, they go way Every dirtbag knows the difference between a piss test and a hair. Oh, hair yeah. test goes back seven years. It goes back <laughs> If you've forever. ever seen Coke, you fucked. <laughs> It's man, really bad. I know, man. I know. I trust me. I know. And I had hair back then, right? So my buddy says to me, "Couldn't you- we'll listen? We'll shave our heads. They'll never get it. <laughs> Even better. Shave your head. Even better." He goes, "Listen." He goes, he, "He's from Jersey. This kid. He moved out to Vegas." He goes, "Listen, I know a stylist out here. Strip, bleach, kill all the fucking shit in our hair. Hundred fifty bucks. Buddy, mine did it. Pass the test." I go, "Let's go." We get out of work. We go to this woman. Does the whole thing. I go home go to sleep. I wake up the next morning and go take this test. I walk by the mirror and I have Estelle Getty colored, like eggplant uh. colored hair. Like the, it's just light pinkish purplish. It looks fucking ridiculous. And I'm like, this isn't good. Like I gotta go. They're and, gonna know something. Yeah, you two fucking well, idiots coming know. in like Green Day. Yes. What the fuck? So, so, look like Marge Simpson. I, oh, sorry. So I show up and I'm like, I'll just schmooze my way out. You know, I'll just bullshit this woman who sits through people trying to bullshit her eight hours a day, right? And I'm just talking and talking and talking. And then finally she's like, you ready? And I go, yep. And I lean forward and she takes it from my arm. Ah. Didn't even touch my fucking head. And <laughs> I, 
I was like, I had an out of body experience. I could see myself like this, still, just frozen, with my head down, waiting for her to take it. And I walked out of that place, and and as soon as I got in the car, I'm like, time to start thinking of some new yeah. work ideas. That's fucking awesome. And and two days later, I'm dealing the fat uh, Jack Mastro with the fucking Jack and Coke walks yeah. over. You lied to me. First of all, I never lied. He never asked me if I was high. I picture I like Paulie Good, f- f- yeah. from Goodfellas. Yeah. I now I have to turn my back on you. He goes, he goes, <laughs> he goes you lied to me. <laughs> go clean out your locker. <sighs> and I go, we have lockers? He goes, yeah. get the fuck off the floor. <laughs> How sad is the locker room of oh, the fucking Rio dude. or wherever the fuck you are? Surely, man. Jeez. What the fuck? And that was how the casino gig ended. <laughs> And that's how the wheelchair gig started, because I'm like, well, they don't drug test. I won't have to sit through that again. And uh, and that's when I started doing stand up because I had a captive audience at work. I could try out material on them, take mm-hmm. it to the stage, uh, started up. There was no circuit there. There was no the hotels weren't letting any no, yeah. micers or anything. Sure. So me and a couple buddies just opened like four or five open mics around the city. Um, and uh, we did that for years. And that's when I started calling into the Stern show. I was a fan for over a decade before I ever That's picked wild. up the phone and called in. And, um, and yeah, and I started calling and contributing. He took my calls, I, and, and I felt like, holy shit, maybe I can play ball with these guys one day. And just kept calling and, and coming up with material and games, impressions, whatever the fuck I could get on the field with, man. And so when they started the serious thing over here, they brought me over just for like a one-week audition uh, for this news team that Howard had, the Howard 100 News, where sure. we covered the world of Howard, the guests, the staff, the whack pack, everything. And uh, it was a 18 person news team. Jesus. Who was the reporter? Lisa G. Lisa G. Lisa G. There was Steve Langford. There was, there was so, there were, and these are all real, like, reporters. Like, this is, was their career for years, and they bring me in. I have three joints in my cigarette pack yeah. in this boardroom. And they're like, uh, but they didn't know anything about the show. They didn't know who the people were. They didn't know the backstory. So that's what saved me is I was brought in almost as like a, a consultant. Yeah. Right. But I also was like, I'm about to shoot my wad here in a couple of days. And then, and then what am I going to consult about? They're going to know everything. <laughs> so I snuck a recorder out and I went out to Times Square and uh, I just started asking people questions about Howard, but essentially doing crowd work. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I figured that's the shit I got to lean on. That's what I was doing before I got here. Sure. That's what I know. And, um, and you know, fast forward a year later, 18 people ended up being four. I was one of the four they kept on. And I did that for almost 10 years. And then from there went to writing, producing, and on-air talent for the show. Uh, and did that for another five, six years. And then, and then that was it. And then I tapped out. No more dealing. Well, I mean, the pandemic fucking threw us for a loop out here you know sure. i got a wife two girls were uh in a two-bedroom in astoria with uh two cats and a dog and uh and everybody everything's falling apart yeah, bodies you know are stacking you up stretch in astoria. It out a little bit. oh man I, I walk out of the apartment guys taking a shit behind my car on the street and he wasn't wearing a mask like a fucking yeah. animal <laughs> like an animal but that's perfect that we just jumped into that so all that shit's behind you yeah you, you're working there 15 years yeah you had to start. You had to start making some coin, right? You had to be doing good well, over there. Listen, if we lived anywhere else, we'd be fantastic. Yeah, but the fact yeah, yeah. that we're a family of four in New York, yeah, sure, you know, I will, I will never say that he didn't pay me well. I mean, he didn't pay me at all. Serious, and they paid me well, absolutely, for the nonsense that I brought on the air, absolutely. But at the same time, it's this is the top of the food chain over here, yeah, sure. man. So that pace, that tempo that you got to keep up, is Something that I didn't even realize I was doing for 15 years. Yeah. Until we were quarantined and then we're stuck and then we're not doing anything. And um, and then we we were like, we want to move. But everything price wise, there was really no difference for us out here. We want to get our first home. And uh, I have a good friend of mine down south in Huntsville, Alabama, mortgage guy on the inside. Yeah. Those Jews keep it tight. He's been telling me he's actually. The most r- hick motherfucker you ever really? met. They don't even know about Jews in Alabama. I know. There's, there's parts of the South they, where you're like a unicorn. My wife was like, you know there's a synagogue a mile and a half from us. I'm like, you mean a trap? Yeah. I'm like, nice. <laughs> it's just a box with yeah. one of those sticks and a string. <laughs> 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 
it's a Jew Roach motel. We just walk in. There's no walking out. So, so yeah. So Two 20s and a knish just right. sitting there. <laughs> it's a guy on the rope just waiting to drop the cage over me. It's like the game Mousetrap. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah. So we're, we're stuck in this apartment. And my buddy's like, dude. He, and he's been telling me for like seven years, just buy property out here. He's like, this, this area's booming. It's going to be another Austin. It's going to be another Nashville. I don't know shit about Alabama. I don't know anything about Huntsville. But I know we're stuck in this two-bedroom apartment, and I knew it was a 14-hour drive to Huntsville. And I said, let's fucking go and see what this place is. Because we started looking at what we could afford. Uh, okay. And it's like... Cooking. I mean, night and day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Surely he's running for mayor. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> Open his own casino down there. I, so we I, we drive out there, and the pace is, you know, people say you pump the brakes on life. This was pulling the fucking like, e-brake yeah. on the highway. That's great, this man. was, everything was different. My kids got a yard, backyard, front yard, two acres, six bedrooms. The mortgage is $300 more than the, the rent was on a two-bedroom apartment in a story. It's crazy. Two acres. That's a lot. They love to talk about the when, when the city kid when, when they when they when they move out there. They love to talk about the acres. acres it's yeah. all I got. Yeah. It's all I got. Yeah, got I open and close. Walk with the it. perimeter every morning. Open and close with it. That's and, awesome. and and so we went out there. We loved the uh, the change of pace. We love the fact that people out there are just living life. Nobody's lecturing you about anything. Nobody's in your business. And well, I mean, it's the suburbs. So everybody's sure, in your a, business, yeah, but of, it's on yeah. a different level, right? Like gotcha. And it, and the manners out there, like everybody's so polite, so nice. Um, they still beat their kids, so the kids are great. <laughs> you know, they're fuck. They raise a good crop with that. I don't give a fuck what you say. That's good. I see those fuckers on Saturday mowing the lawns. Yeah, right. They're flinching, but they're fucking yeah, mowing the lawns. Yeah. They all got black eyes. Yeah, but Limping. they're learning. So so yeah. So we we moved out there, and we've been out there for the last uh, ten months. House has gone up twenty percent. Look at ya. Up, Look oh. at you. Uh, and so oh, property oh, owner. That's talk about letting your acres. beat, baby. Love that. So, but when I moved there, I was still working for the show because we were all working from home. Remote, right. Yeah. Uh, and then I just felt like, um, you know, I just felt like it was time to, to try my own thing. I loved my 15 years there. I loved everything I've learned. It's the reason why I'm able to do what I do because yeah. what I've learned from working with Howard, working with Jay Thomas, working with Scott Farrell, those three radio guys are original dudes and do their own thing. And I got to work with all three of them and take little pieces from each of them and, and throw that into my thing. And, and uh, I, I respectfully said, uh, I'm going to bow out of here. I appreciate everything. And uh, you guys have a good one. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet on me. And that's what I've been doing. That's sick. Love it, baby. I like it. Love hey, it. man, like you it. guys were a big uh, influence in that, oh, dude. I see you, you guys oh, fucking stop. climb. No, for real, thank man. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Until you hired Toby. And then, you know. <laughs> everything home. went down. Huh? So that's a nice fucking end of the rainbow. Yeah. There. I, I love we're that. We're happy. We're I happy. love that. And then um, I came back here. <laughs> So I think I want to it's, ask. It's I wanna, time to play a little A A Y play a little fucking you G, garbage. baby. I want to know about uh, about now how we, how you operate now. Mm. What's going on? So you got the house in the burbs, which is big for us. We grew up in the burbs, yeah, like though. so. It's a couple of real. That's kind of how this show kind of came to came to be, right? Um, do you want to lead off, or what do you want to do? What do you have? What do you have in mind? We're doing single family home here, right? Yeah, yeah. Of garage it down the middle. Oh yeah, got a fridge in there. Uh, no fridge in the garage. Got to get that taken care of. Yeah. First things first, fridge in Although, the garage. Although, well, I have a fridge in the kitchen upstairs, and then in my studio downstairs, there's another fridge. Does that count? Or are we talking like- Is a, it a mini? No. It's a, it's a real Two full-size fridge. fridge in the house is all right. What's in there? What are you, fucking writing a book? <laughs> what are you, recording a podcast? <laughs> uh, is it just things for for- Podcasts and the people over dealing with podcast things. There's some stuff for the for or is podcast there like lunch guests. Meat in there? there, there's uh, leftovers that can't fit in the big fridge. Yeah, it's a second <laughs> that's trash, but it's great. I love it. I, I won't sit for this. <laughs> How dare you? I come here and you insult me. When you have to get a new one in the kitchen, yeah, or that one, yeah, throw one out into the garage, yeah. So you, you want to be a three fridge. Family household? Look at the That's size bonkers. of him. Of course he wants us to be three <laughs> He's a three family. fridge apartment right Jesus now. Jesus Christ. I say we should all have our four fridges. <laughs> <laughs> this is an outrage. I'm for the kids. Right. Sure. Ice pops. I do enough for the kids. They're fine. Yeah, they're, they're doing good. all right. They're good. They, they got they, two acres. I don't yeah. know if you heard. How about, hey, you want ice pop? Clean the fucking litter before some of these cats go find new homes. How about that? Oh, my God. How many cats? 
All right, so. Oh, no. oh that's not Man. a good answer. Yeah. This it should, can't, be, you can't it do should the... be one or two or none is the acceptable answer. You can't do the fucking graveyard shift at fucking Carvel Ice Cream Casino and have multiple cats. This is going to be a problem. This is Yeah, this is not good. I'm not a huge fan of this. <laughs> um, so we left New York with three cats and a dog. We are now oh, in God. Alabama. Oh, boy. With five cats. What? And two dogs. <laughs> what were they hitching? What? <laughs> Listen, there's not a lot of Jews there. I need all the backup I can it's true. get. You understand? Yeah. Claws and paws. Let's uh, go. I, I got to roll I, out. I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My big thing. You need we'll... as many things that'll make noise in the middle of the night to wake <laughs> you the fuck up, Julie. <laughs> Suck my soul right out of my breath while I'm sleeping. <laughs> What'd you do? This was over the pandemic. You guys are around. You're yes, I got my land. kids. So a friend of my wife's uh, this found a cat that had kittens on the street, and and so my girls wanted kittens. So I do the sucker dad thing, and I and they, they, they each them? got kittens. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then you know, and then one thing leads to another. We find a cat out back one day, a kitten. Now that we're gonna give it away, then the girls start crying. We don't want to give it away. <laughs> I'm a pussy at the yeah. end of the day. You and know? they have they have full roam and the, they go outside and all that shit? No, the they're not outside cats. Because there's, there's Alabama. Yeah. They're all inside? They're inside, but it's a huge place. It's they have their bed, little six yeah, bedrooms. They have their little cat sanctuary over there that they just chill at. Plus, I got me so my thing was I told my wife the one thing I want is a big dog. I haven't had a big dog in years. Yeah. I always grew up with big dogs. Miss big dogs. Your parents let you have dogs? You guys had oh, dogs? Oh yeah. That's awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, Work in the car wash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're not in Israel anymore. We can have animals as pets. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so I got a, uh, this guy comes, uh, you want to talk about trash. Guy comes over to take a look at our gas line from the gas company. Um, and he's sitting there f- working on something. And he says, yeah, he goes, uh, just had a litter of puppies. And I go, oh, really? What kind? He goes, German Shepherd. I'm like, wow. oh, I go, really? That's how it is down there. Everyone's having a litter of something at some point. I go, <laughs> you know, I go, how many did you have? He goes, uh, we had, she had 11. God like, what damn. The fuck? Yeah, real whore. <laughs> and, I go, uh, <laughs> and I go, you got any left? And he says, well, my ex-wife promised the last one to a friend of hers, but she's my ex-wife. So for 500, I'll give it to you. Damn. And I go, them. and I go, yeah. Well, and everybody, and that's the thing, because people are like, "Was it a rescue?" And I'm like, "Yeah, for five hundred bucks, yeah, I rescued bucks. it yeah, yeah. from this fucking toothless guy yeah, 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 who's yeah, fixing gas lines." Yeah, and I uh, and I brought her home, all black German Shepherd puppy, nice. Lila, and she's fantastic. But I mean, this dog represents Alabama. I I go out at night before bed, smoke a joint. And next thing you know, I see her chasing a fucking armadillo up to the port. And I'm like, where Damn, you am got I? armadillos? Yeah. I'm like, where am I? I ain't never oh, coming to visit you, Shul. I'm sorry. Man, that's oh, a tough why, one. Why? Those they don't do are, anything. I don't care, uh, man. I don't like the looks. And I got that shell and shit. Yeah, no way. Yeah, no good. Wow. They're Buddy. not bothering you. And like, you cross to the other side of the street um, like a judgmental <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I ain't fucking with them. They're that like thing. fast turtles. I ain't yeah. doing it. <laughs> They're like fast turtles. I'm not. No. Fucking crab dogs, man. No shot. That's awesome. They're better than possums. At least you know they're alive. Possums oh, are fucking... Uh, yeah. they're I doing don't fuck with any of that shit. Daniel Day-Lewis shit on you, <laughs> possums. So it fucking sits up like The Undertaker. What's oh. the grocery store we're going to out there? Uh, I There's a, a Publix that I go to, uh, but there is a Walmart oh, green that if you oh. ever... yeah. What's it, a Walmart green? I don't know, but it ain't It's a good. Walmart with food in it. Oh. Yeah. I thought you were going to say it was like a... Uh, all natural organic like, or something. yeah organic there's nothing let me tell you something i'm the most in shape guy in fucking alabama you understand <laughs> me my crew of friends out there they put you to shame okay <laughs> big boys down there there's, every if it ain't fried i didn't know that twinkies made a cereal till i moved out to huntsville really yeah looks like we're moving the show to huntsville <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude when you walk into a walmart and you're walking by and then all of a sudden you walk by milk you're like what the fuck I, why, why is this here? Why are these worlds colliding? <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. With fucking beach chairs on top of it. I saw pancake syrup that was Captain Crunch Crunchberry flavored pancake syrup. And in the cough supermarket. medicine. <laughs> 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 so they are not looking out for people there. Yikes. But That's people are happy. Fucking awesome. Publix is nice, though. Yes. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a this is a throwback. Butter on the counter or butter in the fridge? Butter on the counter. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Parents did that, too? No, 
They didn't. No. But my parents... Is, is it your wife thing, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, she did it. Yeah, my wife is, like, pretty much a chef. Where's your so, wife really? from? Uh, she's from Jersey. Okay. Yeah. We met her out here. Non-Jew. Mm, love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all shiksa, all day long. Yeah. <laughs> she got shiksa peel. Mm. I love it. I tried that shit. I like the butter on the counter. It's yeah. pretty good. Oh, it's butter nice. on the counter is a nice touch. I don't do it. I should do it. I don't know why. We it's, just grew up not. That would, it was that would be insane in my household, but I would like to try it. Anything you want, smooth. Yeah, just, just smooth. Sure. Take that steak off the grill. Throw that. Yes. Pow. You don't have to wait an hour for the fucking thing. What's the milk with dinner situation down there? The milk with dinner? Yeah. Wait, like, is it allowed? Yeah, do you, you guys do, do it? it? Yeah, we left Israel. We can do kosher. <laughs> We're yeah. kosher. Yeah, of course. We can. Do you guys do it? You sit down, you're having pasta, will you break out the gallon of milk? No, no. never. I never drink milk with pasta. I mean, it can be done, but a am lot of people I insane? Do it. A, a lot, lot of people. people. Am I an insane man no, in a pineapple like, shirt? You seem like a straight shooter, okay? <laughs> well, you intrigued me with the butter. I didn't want to ask. I mean, that's a big jump, Foley. I know. You know? Well, both what about dairy a, products. A pineapple juice and falafel mix. <laughs> you know? It's like, now you're talking where are we sure. going? <laughs> Uh, this does look like a break room at a margarita. <laughs> it really does. Man. So sick of those songs, Six, first, man. First, third, and first, second, and third <laughs> shift. <laughs> All right, here Soon we go. they're gonna drug test us. We gotta go bleach our skin. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy quick, Buffett's here. Quick, let's all piss for each other. Yeah. Um, ever buy anything at auction? No. Hmm. The swap meets count? No. I mean, it's pretty garbage. That's trash, I'll though. give it to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> have you ever watched the implosion of a building? Yes. Uh. <laughs> but, but, in my defense... <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That is the number one trash thing, baby. In my defense, I lived in <laughs> Vegas for 12 years. You know how many casinos they implode in uh, Vegas? It doesn't matter. That's fucking awesome. It, it literally matter, happened. Dude. Listen, it literally happened on my way home from work. I'm driving down the highway. The Sands Hotel is on my left, right? I've been living there eight, nine years. I was so sick of Vegas. All of a sudden, I see this C 130 plane being like on the street, like being towed, and it goes next to the building, and then I see the building just go, and just go down. And I, and my first thought is, was that a fucking terrorist attack? Like, what did yeah. I just see? Turns out they were filming Con Air. I don't know if you remember oh, the end shit. of Con what? Air. Yeah. And, Holy shit. And I just happened to be driving down the highway when that scene happened, and I see them blowing up the Sands Hotel, and I put it all together. And I just go, eh, all right, well, it's Vegas. What are you going to do? <laughs> there is. Also, have you ever been on set at Con Air? You're Dude, trash. there is, that is nothing. <laughs> that is the most garbage that's, thing that's, that I've yeah. ever heard. That's yeah. the white trash mission impossible. Yeah. That's <laughs> fucking awesome. Yeah. By the way, add this to the white trash as far as uh, uh, imp not an implosion, but the opposite. We were at the grand opening night when they let the public in to the Luxor Hotel oh. at like 3 a.m. They opened the doors and all these fucking losers <laughs> yours truly included come running into this casino like what's supposed to happen i don't that know this man. place is oh what are you getting out of this and then we made the huge mistake of going to go eat at the coffee go eat at a restaurant on their first night open ever yeah. and have fun waiting seven and a half hours talk about a tune-up game for it them. was Jesus. the dumbest thing i've ever done uh, I got one from a, that a listener sent me. It's pretty, pretty friggin' solid. And I think I'd like to hear all three of your answers on this. It's from Lisa Marie. Have you ever changed the temperature on someone else's thermostat? Oh, yeah. Oh, you. Fuck For yeah. Sure. My mom's all the time. Yeah, yeah, I said it. What's up, Patty? Oh, me, yeah. and, me and Eli, my pops. That's our thing, toe dude. To toe. That's the Gaza Strip. We yeah. fight over it. You like it colder? He likes it hotter, I assume. He he's makes up nonsense. Yeah, okay. My mom he's does the a same cheap thing. fucker and he doesn't That's what it is. And so we we're in Vegas this summer. This summer. We Damn. just came to visit Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Nevada. Hundred. Hundred and fourteen this day. Right? This day was hundred and fourteen. I go to the thermostat. You know what it's set to? Guess. Seventy eight. I wish it was <laughs> set to 81, 81. Oh, so I turned it down like a maniac to 77, yeah. right? <laughs> he comes out in his fucking BVD nut huggers, no shirt. No wonder he's not hot. He's yeah. fucking Tarzan walking around. And he goes, Shuli, let me explain something to you. 
when you turn the thermostat down, it doesn't get colder. It just makes the engine work harder. And I go, that's well, some old country shit. Right I said, there. well, why are there numbers on the fucking thing yeah. if it doesn't make a difference? Why isn't there pictures of fish on the fucking thermostat <laughs> or or a building? Like, of course it gets colder. Yeah, you wouldn't. It's his job. It's a rotisserie in this fucking condo of theirs. They're Jesus, just slow cooking man. us, and it's a fight every year, every year. Yeah, that's a fucking tough. That's one. fucking fantastic. Yeah. Let me see here. What about what's the coffee pot situation over at your place? Oh, uh, we got the pod thing, the Keurig. Class. It's yeah. nice. Bad. It's yeah. nice. Not bad. Do you There's... have one of those instant kettles? No. Like that? No, okay. no, we don't. Toaster oven? We got uh, we got a toaster. We don't have a toaster oven, and we got... Uh... Oh, yeah, no, no, no. The toaster, it does have the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Air fryer? Yeah. That's big. What's That's the mayonnaise the situation? I feel like they're trash. Do we do it or do we not do it? I'm not a huge fan of mayo. You have it in the house? It's there. What does she buy? Is it Miracle Whip or is it Hellman's? Hellman's. Yeah. Kids are right. Hey, listen. Don't fucking insult me. I'm trash. Really? The, the classiest thing that ever happened to me is my shiksa. Yeah. Is your yeah. wife. I yeah. gotcha. I yeah. gotcha. Hmm. Well, that pulls you up, baby. Uh, You're I'll living take the it. dream. I need the points. Fucking two acres. Uh, <laughs> have you ever been inside a PT Cruiser? No. Okay. No, okay. no, no, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what a great question. <laughs> Do you ever wear any pins? Pins uh, on your jacket? I'm sure I had pins on my jacket when I was in like Band, middle pins, school. Yeah, the middle 80s. School. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, I had denim. I had they the were denim big. jacket. Pins were big in the 80s. Kiss, a couple kiss pins. Hmm. Well, AC. I think mine pin. were like sticky, like, you know, two pigs banging. It said making bacon on it. Like, that was a pin I owned for That's a while. pretty good. I yeah. bet you were big on those T-shirts, weren't you? Oh, Things I love like them. That. Love them. Got I'm sent home. I'm stupid or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Big, were you a big Johnson t-shirt guy? Yeah, if you can read this, the bitch fell off the yeah, Harley. You that know, is the, the dead giveaway for a, <laughs> for a white trash idiot. Is a, is a gimmick t-shirt. Dude, it's oh, right man. up there with the with the um, Yosemite Sam mud flaps. Those are uh, fucking yeah. trash. Or the, the trailer hitch balls. Oh, yeah, that hang there. Truck yeah. nuts. Truck nuts. That's good clean fun right there. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Um, would you ever consider yourself to be good at laser tag? Because <laughs> if you do, you're trash. I, I, listen, I fucked around with it, and it's prime. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I had the vest on. I suited up, uh -huh. suited and booted, but uh, no. There was no. always one guy who was doing, like, barrel rolls and shit. You're like, dude, it's a, seven, it's a seventh grader's birthday party. What are we doing? Yeah, I got a half a pizza in me. Hey, Rambo, take it easy, will you? My buddy had a bachelor party, a two-part bachelor party. One during the, one part of it during the day, the other one at night. So during the day, he took a bunch of us, like 16 of us, to a paintball range. That's big. I have, yeah, have you ever owned a paintball gun was my next question. No, but I can tell you that um, it was one of the most painful experiences. It's not fun, man. After, after. Because, oh, yeah. Because you don't realize the muscles you've never used because you've never been shot at. Yeah, right? you've never been in war. Right. So when you're being shot at and there's... <laughs> You use muscles that the next day I would, if I had to take a shit, I'd just have to fall into the toilet. I couldn't bend. I couldn't do anything. Well, you missed basic training. You went but right these to the kids, fucking war. Yeah, but these kids that like work there, mm -hmm. like the laser tag of the new generation, sure. kids got a backpack on with like paintballs. Fucking oh, it's up. All, I'm like, yeah. how many do you need? We yeah, suck. I know. <laughs> yeah, you guys are shooting each other. It's <laughs> over, Johnny. It's over. <laughs> um, hmm. Favorite salad dressing? Um, this is big. You know, I don't do uh, I do Israeli salads a lot at home, which is like the lemon juice and uh, and uh, say no more, uh, my yeah, friend. Yeah, that's good. But you know, one of my favorite dressings is the salads you get at the hibachi, like a Benihana. Sure. Oh, never been. Never been? No, never been to Benihana. I've been to hibachi, which is trash. Yeah, but it's, yeah. trash. You've never. It's like porn. The minute you're done, you're like, "What am I doing with myself?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very classy answer right there. I got a couple classy answers out of them. I don't know. My no. head's starting to turn the other way. No. Don't worry, Psych. I'll ch I'll change you. <laughs> yeah, this guy's fucking. I mean, we got him dead to rights. <laughs> um, let's see here. I uh, so now you're you have a car, right? Mm hmm. Have you ever had an air freshener? In your car that wasn't the tree, something besides the tree. 
I don't think so. I think okay. it's always been the tree. You're not putting those glades in the vents and the, no. the, the, or the like fan the spins around? Yeah. No. Okay. What the fuck is that? I what, did have one. Do you what, have one you go to? Like what, what kind of tree? Um, I don't know the, the scent of it, but the black one is a good one. I think one. that's typically black ice. Black, pretty black good. ice? Look yeah. You. Leans a little trashy. The black ice leans a little trash. It has a very uh, Jakar vibe yes, to it. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. I'll take that. Cool water. Very Russian immigrant vibe to it. I like it. A little cool water thrown in there. <laughs> <laughs> Ever rode in a car that was being towed? <laughs> <laughs> no, I rode in a tow truck that was towing the car. Yeah, it's always, <laughs> that's that. always an awkward yeah. conversation. But I asked, and the guy's like, can't do it. You know, because I was like, that'd be fun to try oh, it once. Fucking awesome. Were yeah. your dad's car wash is one you could drive through? Yeah. Uh, no, it was uh, hand, you know, like, the hand ones. Yeah, you yeah, had the, the guns, garbage. you had the fucking foam brush, and he. Yeah, where you fucking. Where you clean out the dead bodies from the yeah. Wait, is, it was one where you did it yourself? Yes. Holy fuck. That's why he had to go every that day. That changes everything. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought it was like, you know, Shuli Superwash or something like that. No, it was Shuli's fucking every other weekend had to go down there and help him clean shit up, and I hated it. Man. Fucking hated it. That smell of car wax. Ugh. That's great. Um, mm. Any guitars on the walls? No, ne never played guitar, never learned. I played uh, trumpet and drums in high school. Very nice. Yeah. Here's one that I might get you on. How old are your daughters? 11 and 6. So you're a gamer. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. I assume you have a gaming chair. Yes, I do. How much was that gaming chair? Uh, that one, I want to say, was under 200. Not bad. But, now, the, but then my wife got me one as a gift, and, she got, and it... It's like this low to the ground. It's the most comfortable thing I've ever sat in, but it, there's no way to raise it up. Uh, and that one was like $300. So here's my question. Yeah. What do you play, PlayStation or Xbox? I'm on PC, dog. So the kids have their separate... Yeah, yeah. yeah they, it's like the kids' casinos upstairs, That's and yeah. dads in the fucking real casino That's downstairs. Trash. That was what I was getting at. Do you have two playstations? One for the kids and one for you. I hand them down my shit. I ain't buying them new shit. <laughs> Fuck that. The fucking. It's a three sixty. Oh well, it's better than no three sixty. True. That's funny. Have you ever been to a cockfight? No, I've had a couple. <laughs> hey, -o. no. College. Although I did get a haircut, I used to get a haircut at a barber shop uh, in Astoria where they had it running on the TV. Really? Yeah, from some satellite <laughs> channel. I go, how can I not get my haircut here? You can't. Yeah, me? you have to at yeah. that point. Hmm. You ever see your parents' French kiss? Uh, no, no. Israeli really kiss. <laughs> but I tell you, one of the worst things my mom ever said uh, when we were doing uh, uh, years ago the Miserable Men show on Sirius. Uh, she called in once, and one of the guys asked her, uh, do you and Shuli's dad still have sex? And she said, um, and they, they're not affectionate. They don't get along. And her exact quote was, it's the only reason we are still together. Ooh. And I'm like, yes, would have been yeah. fine, yeah. which would have been horrible. So I hate Sorry, it. Buddy. Keep catching your cords. <laughs> this guy's all tangled up over here. It's all verklempt. Hmm. I think I only got one or two more, uh, and then I got um, I got two from the uh, from the Patreon. We can do. I love it. Um, are you currently are you a Bagel Bites or Pizza Roll family? What way would you lean? Or none? I'm not a fan of Bagel Bites. To be honest okay. with you. Wow. Pizza rolls are okay, but I'll one up you, bro. Lay it on me, baby. Totino's party pizza, the, the square lip. one. I know exactly what you're oh, talking about. Oh, the square about. one. The square so that's one. what you guys are doing. What, oh, hold on. That's what he's doing. That's what I'm yeah. doing, bro. Ah. That's what I'm doing. I'll put I'll put that fucker away at 2 a.m. Yeah. on my own. They're the best. Trashing on PC, mm -hmm. getting smoked by 12 year olds in Call it's of Duty, and cursing them out. The crust really is in pizza crust. It's almost like it's a combination of like cracker and like flatbread, but it's yeah. fucking awesome. It's great. Uh, once you get past that first blast of chemicals yeah. that you taste, the rest of it's delicious. Hmm. Uh, do you call it mini golf or putt putt? Oh, miniature golf. Okay. Call Supermarket or grocery gentleman. store? I think I lean more to towards grocery store. Okay. Yeah. Book bag or backpack? Backpack. Dinner or supper? Dinner. Okay. All right. Checks out. Um, Still trash, but 
All right, we're checking boxes. That's not you got any more? Do you want to do the Patreon? I got two more. Do you get cash back when you when when you make no, a purchase? No. Oh, the dirt no. ballist of dirt ball. Have you ever moves. gone to the ATM just to check your balance? Never. Never. I'm a Jew. What does that cost? You know what I mean? <laughs> How much is that fee for me to fucking want to know what I got? <laughs> yeah. Um. Do you have any saved casts at your home right now? Or be- did you ever save a cast? You broke your arm or something like that. Oh, no. I, I broke my shoulder. I broke my big toe. Never had a cast for either. Uh, Dude, and- those are two of the trashiest injuries that I've ever yeah. heard. Those broke are the injuries that like, they can't do anything for. <laughs> Broke they just my send sho- you all the, the really Civil do. War. Like, ah, just go home and die. They really do. They duct Surely tape my arm to my yeah. stomach, yeah, and they go they have do. fun. Yeah, you they, know? Ta- they tape your big toe to the other one, and it's called a fucking day. The, my dad, though, I tell him, we're playing football after school, me and a bunch of friends, and that's how I broke my shoulder. They went on this side, landed on it, and I call my dad. I go, Dad, I, I have to go to the hospital. I, I broke my shoulder. How do you do that? I said, well, we were playing football, and they landed on me. I broke my shoulder. You broke your shoulder? Yeah. He goes, I've never heard of that. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> My son is a pussy. <laughs> I've never heard of that. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah I got nothing. That was uh, quite the fucking tale, man. Yeah. I love it. I got, uh, I got two from Patreon. Uh, this one is, this is, uh, they call me Judge. Is it garbage to charge your phone at the bar? I would say it's a the tough The first look. thing you do when you walk in, do you guys have a charger? You have a charger? Yeah. No, it's it's t- I get that you trash. have to do it sometimes, but it's not a good look. You might as well open with, can I take a shit here real I quick? I know, it's bad, <laughs> it's bad. And then like you you need it, and you're like, I can't have my phone. And it's a, Oh, it's the word. It starts chiming the minute you uh-huh. put it up to charge. You're oh, like, I'm sorry, can I say that again? It's a tough you look. stack the plates when you guys go out to eat? Will you, will you take the plates from everybody and stack them for the, for the server? No, I mean, fuck it. it's your job, dude. What the? F- that's like fucking the airlines. I go, can you help us clean up? I didn't pick your fucking career. Yeah. You picked it. You clean up this shit. That's what you get paid for. Yeah, I paid to fly on it. it was a fucking, it, you know. Yeah, they do that now. They're under the guise of COVID. Hey, bring your shit oh, with you. Oh, with the song and dance of COVID. Enough yeah. already. You're Let fucking... me get a beer and maybe I'll do it, jerk off. Uh, Try they... to hang out over, you know. Uh, fucking get on spirit. They give you a mouth guard and a cut man on that fucking <laughs> Did flight. You see they just duct tape that, that kid. The best. Oh, fucking love and it. And the crew got in trouble for I that. Know, I know, so I know. So fucked up. The uh, fuck out of here. Um, I wonder right. who got his party mix, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll have his little Diet Coke. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, the last one from Patreon here is from Patrick. Uh, ever drink the juice pops before they were frozen? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I did do that uh, when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Just get it a little cold. Yeah, yeah. mainline in <laughs> <and> fucking... <laughs> yeah, dude. Pull that back like Dizzy Gillespie. You kidding me? I was walking around like a shot girl uh, in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. Love it, man. Thank 100% you. 100% trash. Certified <laughs> garbage. Not like I didn't know it coming in here. Love Unbelievable. It. The I'm casinos, proud. the old school parents. I fucking loved it, man. I fucking loved it. Well, I love you guys, man, and and I love the show. And Thank uh, you, buddy. you guys are so great, and and I I'm so happy for all your success. Thank and, you, buddy. And, Thank couldn't you. Couldn't have happened to two nicer guys. Thank man. you. Appreciate man. It that. It means the world to us. Is there anything you want the folks out there to know you got coming up? This, that, the other. Uh, Patreon.com. Yes. The Shuli Show. You can get it for free too. But why would you do that? Yeah. Uh, there's a ton of bonus content on there. A bunch of episodes that haven't even aired yet. They're coming air. Um, uh, you can get it on all platforms as well on YouTube. And then uh, the Miserable Men Show is a thing I do with a bunch of other comics. Um, and that has its own Patreon as well. The Miserable Men Show. And yeah, Shalom Shuli is the website, the Twitter, Instagram, booking more dates coming up. And uh, thanks for having me, man. Get out of here. Of Absolute course, garbage buddy. royalty. We love you. I love you guys. Thank you for staying with us. Kippy, what do you got for him? Uh, as always, please make sure you rate, view, subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on YouTube, uh, Patreon.com. We have merch. Uh, we got beer koozies, and we're doing another limited run of the card. So yeah. if you haven't already, get those. Grab them. And then live shows coming up. We have Baltimore, Maryland, New Brunswick, Stress Factory, San Antonio, Houston, Moon Tower Comedy Festival, Fort Worth, and Houston coming up. We're putting more in the book, so get some fucking tickets. We're coming to see you, gang. We love you. Providence, Boston, thank you again for coming out. We'll see you next week. Peace.